This one is uh, problem 2.14. Here, for a particular machine, we have to design a very stiff spring which has a kink. Okay. What do we mean by this kink here? Generally, when you plot a spring load displacement curve, if this is your force and this is your delta, you expect a linear behavior in this manner. Right. But if a spring has a kink, that means initially it will follow this curve here, but later on it's going to go on a different line so that this corner is this is your kink there okay now uh, here there are two concentric cylinders one is this aluminum second one is brass and there is a gap of 0 0.08 millimeter in their lens there so when you start compressing this or you start applying load on this on the bottom here what will happen initially only this brass will be engaged but later on when this brass is compressed enough then aluminum will also start playing a role there and that's why the slope will suddenly change now how do we analyze this we can analyze this whole problem by idealizing both of these brass and aluminum cylinders with springs there. Now this is one spring here, this is the second one. The spring with complete length is your brass and the shorter one here is your aluminum there. Right? Now how do we define these spring constants? We can use Hooke's law which says elastic modulus times area divided by length for any bar. This is for aluminum and similarly for brass also. We can have E A over L defined in this manner. Okay. So in the problem, we have the area there, we have the length there. Elastic modulus we can take for aluminum as 70 GPA and for brass we can take it as 103 GPA. Now for the area calculation, if you look at from the top, these are cylinders and they will have this thickness right so this is the area that we are interested in right so if there is a thickness t there and the mean diameter is given your area here is going to be pi times diameter times thickness so your area for aluminum is going to be pi d t for aluminum and similarly for brass you can write pi d t for brass now in terms of length length for brass which is your original length is 250 mm and for aluminum because there is a gap of 0 0.08 millimeter so it's going to be 249.92 millimeter so that's the length we have so now to complete uh, this graph here because that's what they are asking us let me draw a bigger figure here so that you can see clearly so we are doing this so our first point of interest is this one right here so up to delta equals to 0 0.08 mm your only brass cylinder will be engaged because this will be compressed and till it touches the spring right here there will not be engagement coming from your aluminum so only k brass will play a role here so the slope right here is nothing but your k brass and after this point when both aluminum and brass will start playing a role you are going to have your k aluminum plus k brass right here so to complete this plot i can figure out the value of force here f1 value of force f2 right there now this value we know already that we are doing this at delta 0.08 so maybe this also we can do it up to 0.1 millimeter and complete this one right so the force value at delta 0.08 your f1 is going to be your K brass times 0.08 mm and your F2 value here is going to be your K brass times 0.1 mm this is the force coming from your brass cylinder and similarly for aluminum now what will happen with aluminum when you are at 0.1 aluminum started compressing only from this point so the net deformation in aluminum is not going to be this 0.1 but it's going to be the gap between this and this so this you can write as 0.1 minus 0.08 mm okay so if you do these calculations right your f1 value is 97.08 and your f2 value is 148.88 kilonewtons here and kilonewtons there okay so that's the complete curve so this is plotted in kilonewton side here this one is 148.88 and this one is 
जीरो ही